Mm, good evening. Welcome to the St. Michael Spiritual Hour, where we believe in a positive spiritual attitude for positive spiritual attainment. This show is sponsored by St. Michael Spiritual Church, P.O. Box 578, Crete, Illinois, 60417. Go to Dr. Michael O. Chapman.com for more information or call us at 708-752-0895. 708-752-0895. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, Twitter and Vimeo, Instagram, uh, and uh, of course, you can always get us uh, every Wednesday at well, every Thursday morning at one at 12 uh, a.m. or Wednesday night, depending on how you want to look at it. But we are always here waiting just for you. We believe that the glass is half full, it is not half empty. All right, and uh, the purpose of this program is to lift people up. As we lift up the name of Jesus, we want to share positive energy and stories with you to help you think, meditate, and spiritually make it. This is your hour. Thank you for joining me on today, or wherever you are in the world. I appreciate um, just being here with you. Thank you so much for your donations and your time and your prayers and your well wishes and your thoughts. We love that. It keeps us going. Uh, we love all that positive energy, and we give it right back to you. All right. Again, we believe that the glass is half full. It is not half empty. So when things happen, we try to take the positive perspective, not the negative perspective. We try to focus on what's good and not really what's negative on that. Okay, there's enough negativity going around that we don't need to add to it. We need to add some positive stuff to it. So when things happen, uh, you consider negative, we think of it as an opportunity to thank God for us, uh, allowing us to witness and learn from the situation. Okay, and we believe that there's no no other way to be closer than God, to, to affirm it, that I am uh, close to God, I am spiritual, I am one with the Master. And that just continues to lift you up and change your perspective. Remember, your body does what your mind uh, thinks and does, okay? So, you have to flood it with positive energy, flood it with positive thoughts, flood it with positive things, and those things that are not like him and not like you, don't embrace those. Pray for those things. Meditate and say, Lord, uh, let's move that, okay? I've learned from that lesson. Let's move that experience. What do you want me to learn from this? And that's talking to the master and being one with him. So, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And also today we're going to talk about on the road to the to Damascus, how, how do you change uh, one's behavior or what happens to change a person's behavior? Uh, and behavior, we know that behavior is uh, learned. It is not automatic. People learn what to do or what not to do. And uh, we're going to discuss that a little bit later on. But first, I think we're going to do uh, the healer's prayer. And we're going to pray for those who need help. Uh, around the world, all over today. We're going to pray for them uh, and, and that God lifts them up. Whatever they're going through, uh, uh, let's get through it and learn from it. Okay? Father, we come to say thank you this morning. We lift you up. Mm, we lift your mighty name up right now. And those that need help today, Father, we ask that you help them. Those that need prayer today, Father, we're praying for them right now. Those that don't know you, don't know their way, what they're going to do next, Father. We ask that uh, you step in and deliver them. That's our prayer. Those that want to take their lives, Father, we ask that, that you step in. Show them the light and change their thinking right now. Those that are addicted, those that are addicted to whatever it is, and seem like they can't break away, Father, we speak strength to them right now. To the angry family. That, that's not getting along, Father. We speak peace in the middle of that. That's our prayer. Mm, those that are lost, captured, we ask that you set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are in the hospital, we speak healing right now. Those that are hurt, we speak healing right now. Mm, keep them uplifted. Those that are depressed, we raise them up in the mighty name of Jesus right now. There is a brighter day. There is a new way. That's our prayer for them. Keep them right now. The parents who worry about their children, pray for them. And we pray for them also. That they may be changed 
They may see the light. They may live is our prayer. Keep them again. Keep all our children. Keep all our ministers. Keep all our um, families together, Father. We speak peace, clarity, and not confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we say the healer's prayer. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. God bless you this morning. God keep you. It's my prayer for you. Nothing but positive energy is going out to you. Okay, and we, we're firm there right now. Speaking of affirmations, I think we need to do that. Let's do that right now. Okay, and you all know my script by heart. Stay living with me. Uh, and there's no hurt. There's no hurt in that. Say that with me. I am, and make, and you can make up your own uh, as you go. Okay, you say, well, I'm sick of yours, Doctor Chapman. Okay, well, make up your own. Okay, you got the same ones. I, I got the same ones because new people are listening. And you may want to share the affirmations also on YouTube on the I Am Affirmations, uh, Michael O. Chapman. You can do that and you can say that on your own every day. So, I am great. I am beautiful. I am handsome. I am courageous. I am a miracle. I am a believer. I am sure. I am sane. I am healed. I am healed. I am in I am healed. I am intelligent. I am awesome. I am energy. I am spirit. I am fearless. You say that again. I am fearless. I am productive. I am ready. I am confident. I am powerful. I am strong. I am free. I am successful. I am honest. I am loving. I am sympathetic. I am prayerful. I am that I am. I am, therefore, I think. My life is God. God is my life. All right? So we affirm that on today. If you could come up with some other, I am beautiful. I am handsome. If you have your children, say that. I am a winner. I am not a loser. I am happy. I am not depressed. Uh, so in, anytime you could do that, uh, God is good. We connect with one with the master. I am one with God. That's why Pastor Lucretia L. Smith, the second God bless you and keep you. Thank you for joining me on today. Slow down. Okay, my, my producers say slow down. But I kind of get into this the groove of going a little faster. All right, because I don't want to bore you. But uh, God bless you. Thank you, uh, Pastor LaCretia, for, for uh, stopping by tonight. I feel your energy. Your energy is good. You know, we all grew up together. I'm going to tell you about my 30th year anniversary in a few minutes. 30 years. Can you believe it? If you'd like to be on, on uh, my prayer list, 708-752-0895. 708-752-0895. We're getting ready to go on our prayer list right now. Uh, and you can text that and say, look, you know what? I need to be on your prayer list. Put my, and people have done that. I need to be on your prayer list. Pray for us. And we, we could do that just for you. Uh, and uh, why? Because it takes nothing but energy from us. And that's what we're doing our job. We're on it. We're on it. We're on our job. So, and if your name comes up without you calling uh, or without you saying, we just we just pray that all is well. Okay, and we believe in moving by the Spirit. So, God bless you, Lucretia L. Smith, the second pastor. God bless you, and God keep and strengthen you. Whatever is on your mind, whatever you want to do, we speak success for you on tonight, this moment. Um, you know, you got some graduations coming up. So we, we uh, thank the Lord for that. We thank the Lord for everything he's done for you and how he's kept you. And why wouldn't he? Okay, why wouldn't you have good DNA? Why wouldn't you? You've been obedient to the master and he just continues to bless and keep you. Okay, so we continue to bless and keep you. And we send that energy to you, Pastor Smith, and all those who are listening tonight. All right, so on my list today, Mother, Mother Neil, you're first. God bless and God keep you. Pastor Baker, Circle of Praise, Guy Can Ministries in Cairo, Illinois, Pastor Zach Green, and Prophetess Mother Green, the whole Green family. Uh, God is doing great things for you, and we speak success in all that 
you, he's doing for you and with you. El Shaddai Miracle Temple, Pastor Daisy Williams Martinez. God bless and God keep you and strengthen you and the entire El Shaddai family. Uh, Betty Cook in Virginia. God bless and God keep you. Brother Williams in, in Alabama. You weathered the storm. That's good. God bless and God keep you and your wife. Brother Williams in Alabama. Norman family all over the south and east and everywhere. Uh, Dan Norman. God bless and God keep you and strengthen you is my friend all that you do god's not done with you yet the hardwood family the macklin family uh here there and everywhere even down in mississippi we bless you the macklin family macklin family queen you know my list today billy brooks austin god bless and god keep you is my prayer all those in kankakee that follow me uh send you nothing love nothing but love minister tony uh Cephas, uh Pete, your entire family, God bless and God keep you and strengthen you. See your sins in Kansas City. Jesus, the light of the world, he says, and, and, and shine your light. Uh, and don't let anybody put it out, okay? Shine your light all the way from Kansas City, Missouri. Bless him, see your sins. Uh, the Audubon family, my Audubon family on the north side of Chicago. Bless all of you guys. Um, Let's see. I'm, I'm just looking. Hold on. Reverend King, uh, Stacy, God bless and God keep you. And Talisha, bless and God keep us big peace in that situation. Dion, uh, God bless and God keep you and strengthen your entire family, safe travels. Um, and I think that's it for. And all those who had birthdays, bless you, boys, too. It's a lot. So God bless and God keep you for another chance. Uh, Kerber family doing well. God bless you for your prayers. Um, we just continue to pray, pray Kerber family. You're doing great. And for that grandson who's and your mother. No, oh, Charlie's mother. God bless and God keep her. It gives me hope. She's 100 years old. Oh, my God. There's hope. So uh, you can live and not die. You can. So God bless that family. Entire family. It's a beautiful family. They're on another generation and another generation and another generation. So God bless you. So you're needed. You're needed, Kerbers. You are needed. You're needed. So God continue to bless you is my prayer for you. All right. All those in California, we lift you up. I'm trying not to miss anybody because people will let me know when I miss them. All right. Oh, Minister Donna, God bless and God keep you and strengthen you. Uh, thank you so much. I did say... Uh, God bless Talisha for your donation as well. God bless uh, Dan for his donation as well. All those who have donated, I really appreciate it. Some people don't want to be known. Okay, but I just send it out there to you. So God bless and God keep you is my prayer. Well, Williams has a birthday celebration coming up soon. God bless and God keep him and strengthen him. We're praying for the Rileys today. Uh, did I mention them? I will mention them a little later. Pastor Riley, Pastor Gail, and Pastor Will Riley, uh, Center of Hope Ministries uh, for the Chosen. God bless and God keep you. They're going to be my guest speakers for my anniversary, which is coming up uh, in, on the 30th all right, of this month. And I'll, I'll read it again before the end of our conversation on tonight. But it will be uh, a luncheon, 30 years, $30, April 30th. Uh, 30, 30, 30, uh, at North and Maple Kitchen and Bar East Room, I mean Great Room, 18401 North Creek Drive, Tinley Park, Illinois. That is, uh, on the 30th, 30th year anniversary, and of course it, the donation is $30. So we're, gonna, we're coming to have a fantastic time. Hope to see you there. Hope to see you there. For more information, go to my website, drmichaelochapman.com or uh, call Minister Crystal Chapman, 708-752-0895. All right. That out the way. I'm going to talk about change. Um, and change is... Uh, why are you talking about change? Because um, your role... What, what is... You know, I want to talk about your role in the change of yourself and someone else. Um, so if I like to give this example, if some if you're walking down the road and someone is drowning, 
what are you going to do? Are you going to keep moving like it's none of my business? Or are you going to jump in because you want to save the person? Uh, or are you going to call for help and jump in? So what exactly are you going to do? And some people, well, what does that have to do? Because there are some people who are drowning uh, spiritually. and some people who are on, who are, think they're doing okay, but they're really not. Uh, there are people who are disruptive. Uh, there are people who think they know everything and everything is fine, but in a sense they are drowning because they're not making spiritual progress. And there are people who are disruptive. They disrupt the family. They disrupt everywhere they go. They have well, sometimes they have a demon. Okay, so they need delivering. Um, they're drowning in their own self. They're drowning in their ego. They're drowning um, and just disrupting everything behind. There's some people who are just angry. Okay, but that's not of God. That's definitely not of the Christ. Okay, so what do you do? What's your role in all of that? Do you just let them, well, you know, some people say, well, I can't, I can't do anything until they're ready. Really, where they're crying out for help. If somebody's in the pool drowning, they're crying out for help. What are you going to do? Keep going and say, it's not my business. Uh, I don't have anything to do with this. Are you going to be merciful? Are you going to be courageous in the Lord? Are you going to move by the Spirit? And you don't have to wait. You can move. Or are you going to ask God to step in? What are you going to do? Are you just going to let things go and let the person drown and then move on? Uh, and you say, well, I don't even know the person. Well, it could be somebody in your family next. It could be you. It could. Well, you think, well, I know everything. Everything's fine for me. But you still get this ailment. You still get this. You still get that. And when they ask you how you're doing, you say, I'm doing all right. But you're really not doing all right, you're suffering, uh, and you want somebody to deliver you, but you stubborn, your ego is in the way, and you don't want to say anything, or you know someone, that those with sight, uh, know someone who's going through, you can see that they're uncomfortable, that they're dying slowly, uh, they're not making any progress, and what is your role? What is your role with all of this? How do I make a person change and uh, I can't grab them and shake them sometimes I wish you know people say sometimes I wish I could just grab them and shake them out of whatever it is that's bothering them sometimes I need to just kind of make them uh, take another perspective a lot of times and there's a lot of theories about change behavior change but we know that sometimes it takes uh, something catastrophic something uh, bigger than themselves to make them change. Um, sometimes it takes something like a funeral, uh, something like a heart attack, uh, something that grabs them, COVID, uh, uh, to make them, those are catast catastrophic events, uh, a marriage, a birth, um, an overdose, all those things are uh, of a great magnitude, but sometimes that's what it takes to make a person change. Uh, but they need support. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that happened uh, to Saul, who became Paul. Okay, so let's go to. Um, I think I covered everything. My wife is. Uh, I think I covered everything today. But let's go to Saul. Acts the the ninth chapter, and I'm going to read it. I'm not going to put it on the screen, but I'm going to read it. And I'm reading from the NIV version, okay? Meanwhile, Saul was, this is the first chapter, you know, first verse, you always start, the, I always start at the first verse, I try to, okay? Let me see what she's saying. All right, I'm not putting it on screen. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciple. Saul was like, now you don't even know anybody like that. Um, they just, uh, they think they're doing right. Religiously right, intellectually right. We gotta rid these people, okay? Uh, and and what they do is they say, you know what? I don't like these Christians, which is kind of oxymoron, but it's okay. I don't like them. You make fun of them. What you're doing doesn't make sense. Why are you praying like that? You know, you need people like that. Why are you praying like that? God's not hearing you. There is no God. 
Why are you doing that? Okay, uh, that sure is funny. They are funny. Why is it doesn't? Then it is another one. It doesn't take all that really. In the meantime, you're drowning and you're putting people down, uh, and you becoming the judge. It doesn't take all that. Uh, that's crazy. Look at them jumping like that. What's God holding them? All that, uh, and they just continue to be, uh, berate them and put them down. You are in the saw mode. You are. You are murdering. Can you murder somebody without fleshly killing them? Yes, you can. You can. You can murder their thoughts. You can murder their um, their motivation. That's never gonna work. I hate this place. You know, hate is pretty strong. I hate this place. All you, I hate all of you. Why are you going to church? Why are you in the Bible? Why are you on the phone talking to us? Why are you listening to Dr. Chapman? Why are you uh, uh, on the on the site? Why are you staying up so late? All those things are attacks. You're in the saw mode. Okay, so now, now when I read stories, you know, I ask you, who are you in the story? Okay, so Saul, he uh, continued to uh, put out murders and threats against the Lord's disciples, and everybody knew that. He went to, no, this is a, he went to the high priest, the second verse, and he, and he asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any, any there who belonged to the way, Christ's way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Okay, so he asked, now they asked for backup. You know, people who do destructive things, sometimes they need backup. They want to get uh, permission from somebody else, or they want their back. They want what they're doing justified. That's what it is. They want they're just doing what they're doing justified. Well, and they'll say, well, Joe over here told me that that's okay. Those Christians or those people who are praying, nothing's going to happen. Or why are you going over to that church? You need to go to this church. Well, you know, there's so many churches because you need to find out where you fit. Okay, so anyway, he needed uh, some backup, okay, and he was out the men and women, men and women, it did not matter, all right, as he entered, this is the third verse, as he, as he neared Damascus on his, on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and I don't know if you've ever had this experience, I have, it's, we're not going to talk about that tonight, but I have. Okay, and Damascus represents selfish. Okay, selfish, uh, um, what does that put? Strife. He's on that road, okay? So, a light came upon him. Hmm, have you ever had that happen? So, this is, this is his moment. This is his ca catastrophic moment. This is his um, life changing moment. And, and if you haven't had it, maybe you want to ask God. To have it, all right. Or pray that the person who's disrupted, or the person who's spewing out, spewing out negative things, negative thoughts, or talking about uh, what you're doing, because you know they don't want to be delivered. The, the physical man doesn't. The spiritual man does. All right. So they they're in a they're in a battle with themselves. Okay. So here's Saul. He think he's doing what's right. These people think they're doing what's right. They could be in your family, they could be in the pulpit, they could be in the church, they could be everywhere, anywhere, in the job. They think they're doing what's right. And you're just minding your business. But this is your business. Okay, so uh, as he journeyed near Damascus on the journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. No, uh, verse 4, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul. Why do you persecute me? Now, this is a life-changing experience. And there are a lot of stories of, of, of this happening to people today. Today, okay? So don't think, well, that happened a long time ago. It's not going to happen to me. Or it's not going to happen. It can't happen to the person that I'm dealing with that is bound right here by that negativity. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Number five, because we believe in miracles, you know. We believe in deliverance. We believe in healing. We believe in all of those things, okay? Number five, who are you, Lord? Saul asked, who are you? Now he's a little afraid, okay? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told 
what you must do. He gave him a directive. And the light just doesn't come just to shine. It's always something that you have to do. You have to do this some direction. <coughs> the seventh verse. Excuse me. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. They're looking. But they didn't see him. They heard. Usually, there's always a witness. Why? Because the person that is going through will ask, did that really happen? Did you hear that? Did you see that? Am I losing my mind? Or did that really happen? Am I dreaming? It's a vision which doesn't matter. But you have a witness, okay? So, Saul got up from the ground. But when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. He was blinded. So they led him by hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. What does that mean? Well, this is life changing. Something happened. The light was so bright for him. It was for him. Not the people standing around, but for him. The light was so bright that it blinded him. And he needed, he needed to experience what that was like. Okay? So that it wasn't over in a flash because what we do know is people who overdose and they're saved, a lot of times they go right back to what they were doing before. It was not catastrophic enough. So people who uh, uh, beat their mate, wife, husband, they get jailed. They come right back out. The jail time was not enough and continue to do what they were doing before. Those who are um, those who are persecuted usually persecute other people. They do. So but this was life changing. He wanted to show Saul what it was like. Okay? So during that time he did not eat or drink fat. Now I don't know if you ever fasted before. But sometimes it takes away the physical and brings you to the spiritual. Okay? In the math in number tenth verse, in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas and straight on straight street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Now some of you say, well, how can God can do anything? And there is a plan, and he does have disciples, and he does have healers, and he does have doctors, and he does have priests, and he does have people working for him. Okay? Now remember, who are you in this story? All right? So Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. Now, if the Lord tells you to do something, come on, Trisha Ben and Steele. If the Lord tells you to do something, how many times do you talk back to him? Now, Lord, that's fear. You want me to go put my hands on this man and heal him, but you know, he is treacherous. He is uh, horrible. Then he has authority from man. Those are all excuses. I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to, that's not my business. I'm not going to do that. And the Lord has told you to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to heal him. I'm not going to deliver him. I'm not going to do any of those things. Excuse me. <coughs> and you argue me. I'm not going to do that. So a nice, he said that back. Okay, I heard some rough stuff about this man. You want me to go and do this? So 
we can't pick and choose who we want to heal or who we want to pray for. You go when the Spirit tells you to. You go when God tells you to. The man is waiting for him. All right? Uh, but the Lord said to him, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. Immediately, immediately, not later, immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Life changing for Saul who later became Paul. Um, Amias was obedient after some convincing. He was obedient and he went straight. So God has a plan for those people who act like um, they are better than or prosecuting those who pray, those who go to church, those who uh, love the Lord, uh, uh, and those who talk about those who talk about Christians who talk about people you should never talk about anybody because you don't know what they're going through you don't but you pray for them and if God tells you to heal them you do that if God tells you to put your hands on them you do that no excuses no uh well I know he's tough I know he's rough that's fear and you should not be fear you not should be afraid of anybody and when God tells you, Jesus tells you to do something. If the anointed one tells you to do something, he's already prepared the way for you. Always, already prepared. Already So all you have to do is show up and do what you do. Was he delivered? Yes, he was. Did you walk? Uh, he's a drowning man. You don't walk by. You continue to do what God tells you to do. Pull him out. Save him. Female or male does not matter. They're disrupted. They're calling out for help. Behavior change. Well, what changed them? That catastrophic moment, that life-changing moment on the road when he thought he was going to uh, get me some more Christians and kill them and take them into Jerusalem. Uh-uh. God had another plan for him. So, what's your role? Who are you in the story? Um... Pray for a life-changing event to happen. If it's someone in your family or someone you know that needs to be delivered, pray for uh, God to give them a life-changing event. And you can pray that. That will change them if you think you can't do it. Continue to be motivational. Continue to be positive. Just continue to set the example. Don't be afraid because fear will take you out. I don't know, they act all crazy. Act is the key word. They act crazy. But God can God can do something that you cannot do. And pray. And then wait for the manifestation. Wait for it to take place. Wait for it to come alive. Wait for it. And you can sit back and say, I know. You can tell the story. I remember when your name was Saul. But your name now is Paul. You can tell the story that God never fails. I can't reach him. You can't reach him. Don't be afraid. But tell God to reach him. He can do it. He, don't you give up. Don't you be one of those standing on the sidelines saying, I would jump in, but I can't swim. You can always get help. Or, that's not my business. It is your business. Saving mankind. Do your part. Do your, do your part. Do what the Lord tells you to do. I'm encouraging you on that today. Today. Don't look back and say there were times when I wouldn't even do that. I used to talk, and you, you know, you go into this thing, I used to talk about it too. But now, 
Uh, are you going to be a Christian? Are you going to be a follower of Christ? Are you going to help people? Or are you just going to let them go by the wayside? People outside of your family, whoever you come in contact with, that's who you need to help. That's who you need to save. All right? That's who you need to save. Don't be, don't be little anyone, because you never know. And, and Anais is like, well, this is the guy that, that was killing killing people, and, and he's got authority. And, and, and God replied, he is one of my chosen. I have work for him to do. Now, you may know people who have changed like that. You may know people who have uh, gone through some things. And they're not the same anymore. Your job is not to condemn them from where they came from. Your job is to thank the Lord that they made that change. There are people who are going through stuff that need to talk to somebody and tell them that something happened to me. It was kind of I don't know what happened, but God changed me. So we're not worried about what they used to be. We don't worry about them being Saul. We're concerned about them being Paul. And then Paul, and you need to read the rest of the story, the rest of the Acts, how Paul championed uh, for the Christians. Yeah, he was one of God's chosen. He was one of God's chosen. So who are you in this story? Are you Ananias? Uh, who was kind of afraid, but he did do what God told him to do. He became the healer. He was. Um, uh, you saw who were persecuting, who talk about people, Christian, Jews, everybody. He talks about everybody, and he's killing their thoughts. He's killing their energy. That's what he does. Are you, um, are you, the, are you the onlookers? Okay, are you are you them? One of them, or are you Paul, who goes through and becomes brand brand new? All right, God bless and God keep and strength you. Thank you for joining me on today. God is awesome. He's not awesome sometimes. He's awesome all of the time. Will he deliver every time? Does he need your permission? No. There's some people he don't need my yeah. But he needs your positive thoughts. He will give you your heart's desire. So if I'm concerned about you. If I'm concerned about you, God knows that. He knows that. He knows that. I'm, you know, I'm concerned about everybody on my prayer list. I really am. Lord, keep them. And he honors that. Okay, so you, pray. Don't be selfish. That's Damascus Road. Don't be selfish. Mm -mm. Give, all right? Give. And trust God. He's going to do what he says he's going to do. All right. God bless and God keep it to you. Uh, thank you for joining me on tonight. I have an announcement, of course. My anniversary is coming up. And you can always reach me at 708 752 um, But my anniversary is coming up this month. It's my 30th year anniversary as a pastor and for the church. Uh, and it's April. We're going to celebrate April 30th. I'd love to see you there. Uh, Saturday, April 30th, 12 noon. That's a lot of time. At North and Maple. Uh, kitchen and bar, East Room, uh, now Great Room, not East Room, Great Room, uh, 18401 North Creek Drive in Tinley Park. Okay, I guess speakers, Reverend Will and, and Gail Riley, pastors in the Hope Ministries, they got a great story to tell for, tell you. All right, so you can zell me at michaelopsa at gmail.com, 708-299-0621, cash app, Dr. Michael O., uh, PayPal me Chapman seven 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 or seven zero eight two nine nine zero six two one for tickets and more information. Love to see you there. Thirty years, thirty dollars, April thirtieth. Okay, God bless you and God keep you in the I love to see you there and celebrate with me. We're gonna have a fantastic time as always. Okay, so uh, God bless you. I think my prayer words right now. My wife's gonna get mad, but I have to go back to my list. And put some people on here. Reverend London, God bless and God keep them strength and praying for you. Reverend Gray, God bless and God keep you. Nurse Morgan, God bless and God keep them strength and you. Is my prayer. Uh, Mabel, Leona, and I got to mention them on my prayer list as well. You on my prayer list as well. Ruthie and Chester, always on my prayer list. God bless and God keep you, and I'll see you next time.